Hey folks, how you doing? It's Richard from Bike Packing Adventures. Thanks for joining me once again for this series of Paris Breast Paris tips, advice, questions that you need answering. Also, lots of advice if you're doing your first ultra or you just want to learn a little bit more about ultra racing. So let's dive straight in. Actually, just before I do, this jersey I'm wearing, it's a Flandrian one. Got given this uh, at the start of the Transcontinental race last summer, I just thought I'd mention actually. It's a great one, isn't it? I love it. My favourite colour, green. So yes, kick it off, the first tip. Gearing. Bicycle gears. You're probably wondering what sort of gearing your bike might need to have for taking on Paris Brest Paris. And I can tell you, you uh, will be expecting rolling countryside. And you wouldn't be wrong in thinking that. It is predominantly rolling, not too many steep climbs. If you've been doing like me, putting loads of uh, training in Wales or maybe Scotland, it's probably good, put it to good use really, because there's a lot of climbing in both, but uh, nothing like Wales in terms of steep and uh, longevity. I think the highest kind of goes up, or at least in 2019, was about 300 metres above sea level. This year, we're not going across the rock, not by the same climb. Not entirely sure about the uh, navigation through Brittany at that point, but I don't think there's any mountains we're going to be going over. Certainly not in Brittany anyway. So, yeah, pretty much rolling countryside. Of course, there will be the odd steep bit here and there, but short and sweet. And so, you probably don't really need to do anything out to the ordinary to what uh, you currently got a self your bag, really. Uh, maybe, you know, if you're set up on the fly and you've got a really short, small cassette, then maybe I'd perhaps increase the uh, number of gears. But you don't need anything excessive. My bike in particular, uh, I've got an absolute black uh, chain ring on and I've got quite low gearing. And it's probably, it's over the top really for an event such as Paris Space Paris, but it's what I've got it's fitted at the moment. And I'm just going to stick with it until that's knackered and uh, go replace it. So that's my advice really on gearing. Stick with what you've got. The uh, next topic I wanted to talk about was places to buy food or lack thereof. Um, France is a pretty traditional country and you'll be riding through lots of places that aren't on the tourist track. You'll find that the controls are well spaced out and indeed the first control, Villiers de Joule, is 200 kilometers from the start. So if we talk quickly about the start of the race, the start of the event rather, you need to make sure you've got, you know, food to last you a good chunk of time. However, there are stores set out along the route, pulled by families and other organisations, but you can't rely on those. So make sure you've got your snacks and things. Personally, I'll be riding with enough food for well, to last me a day and a half and it'll only be snacky stuff I'll be buying proper food or acquiring it along the way so yeah make sure you start with snacks uh, hydration tablets uh, energy gels if you you know you take those there are opportunities along the way with shops and supermarkets but uh, you if I was you I'd make the effort to find out where they are first and in your uh, routing software or on a piece of paper it's easier just to make notes where they are opening times is also useful so yeah when it comes to finding places to eat do a little bit of research and the same goes for drink as well I guess uh, unlike the UK if that's where you live there are fountains uh, campsites are plentiful in some parts of Brittany look out for those uh, you'll find water cemeteries quite often and if you see any camper vans or motorhomes parked up I'll check them out as well because often you'll find a fountain or something like that so yeah that's tips 
for finding water on the move. Of course, with both of those, food and drink, there are plentiful supplies of both at the controls. But obviously, if you go there, you can potentially spend a lot of time and be tempted to perhaps sleep. Now here's perhaps something you didn't know. When you go, it's not really a tip, it's something you should know about riding in France. Obviously, you know, you ride on the right side of the road or the wrong side of the road, depending where you're from. Uh, it's also, did you know, you're not supposed to have flashing lights. So, it's meant to have a static light. Make sure your light's on static and last throughout, throughout the entire event. Now, the best way to do that is not to rely on USB. Buy yourself a cheap pair of battery powered rear lights. Maybe something from Cat Eye, like the Omni, and you'll be fine. Now, in a previous episode, I was asking you what your plans are for sleeping. How are you planning on sleeping? Or rather, where are you planning to sleep? And for those of you who are thinking or are going to be sleeping at the controls, not intending to sleep outdoors anywhere, I would still urge you to take either a beefy bag or an emergency blanket, like a foil emergency blanket at the very least, just in case you do not want to be in a situation where at two o'clock in the morning, really cold, got mechanical, or you're just exhausted and you need to sleep for an hour, 40 minutes or whatever, do take something like that with you, just in case. It does get quite cold in Brittany. In 2019, it was pretty close to freezing point. I kid you not, August, yeah. So beware, it can get cold. It seems that whenever I go outside to do one of these uh, tips videos, even if it is today, traveling home from work, it always seems to be raining. And a little windy. The next thing I'd like to talk about is paying for things. Um, yeah, kind of falls into two camps really. Cards and money. So before I make my way to France, I'll be going to the post office, the Bureau de Change uh, at home and getting some small denominations of euros for spending not only at the controls, but a few of these smaller shops in the smaller villages which uh, may not take a Visa or American Express or MasterCard or whatever you might use. Although in my experience, all the small shopkeepers do now seem to accept cards. I was in France only last month and uh, I hardly ever use notes or coins to buy anything. But it's always useful to have just in case. As for buying things out of the controls, um, I can't remember what the situation was in 2019. Uh, that was the last time I did PPP and the first time. I think I was using cash to pay for things. Maybe they use cards now, so I can't give you a definitive answer on that one. I would expect they've caught up with the world now and uh, you know, using credit and debit cards, but uh, I would take some real cash anyway. Now I did mention two ways of paying, cash and card, but there is in fact a third way you can pay for goods in another currency, different to your own, and that is using apps like Revolut, which allow you to uh, actually have several accounts, different notes and coins in each digital currencies. And I've used it successfully in the transcontinental last year. You will need to apply if you want a physical card. This is a process you need to go through. You can have a virtual card, which you can load into Google Pay, I believe, which is another thing you should get set up before you go over to France. Get that set up. It's really useful to have 
Um, especially if you go to the supermarkets, you can just wave that card. Speeds up the whole process for you and you can less time faffing around with coins in your pockets. Revolut, look it up. I'll drop the link down below. And I believe that can, can be an affiliate link as well. So if you join up by the link, I think there's a bonus in there as well. I'll stick it in brackets after the uh, after the link with a bit more information. So that's it for this uh, Paris Press Paris tips video. A few tips for you to uh, think about, words of advice. Don't forget to read down in the comments below. You get involved, share your tips and tricks because I'm always uh, eager to read what other people put down there. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I'll stick a link to a couple of Paris Press Paris videos from the event in 2019 at the end of this one. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, now might be the time to hit that button, hit notify me on any of the forthcoming videos in this PVP series so you don't miss out on anything coming up. Right, take care, I'll see you in the next one.